Right, so hypertension, one of the most common diseases you'll ever see, especially now that they've lowered the definition to 130 systolic or 80 milligrams diastolic. So you, if your blood pressure, if you have either of those, you um, well, you have to you have to get measured multiple times. But if if you get um, above those numbers for multiple times, and you're defined as having hypertension, and you may not. A lot of your patients won't be really aware of it. They won't, won't really care about it because they won't have any symptoms. But as we're going to see later, hypertension has a lot of complications. So um, it can lead to a lot of bad things. So we want to make sure it's controlled as much as possible. Now, there are two types of hypertension, primary and secondary. Primary is hypertension of an unknown etiology. It's We, we say it's the primary cause. It's just it's because you have hypertension. There's multiple risk factors for this, including age, obesity, diabetes, physical, physical inactivity, and a high salt diet. So um, a lot of these are modifiable risk factors, as you can see. Well, age you can't really modify, but being obese you can modify, having diabetes you can modify, you can be more physically active, you can eat less salt, and also being African American is a risk for primary hypertension. The second hyper type of hypertension is secondary. So this is a hypertension due to a known etiology. So we use the word sec um, secondary. We say this hypertension is secondary to um, whatever, renal artery sten stenosis. You can say that um, the, let's see, what else? Let's see, uh, pulmonary embolism secondary to um, a DVT because the DVT shot off an embolus into the lungs. So due to known etiology, and the most common etiology is renal artery stenosis. I'm going to show you why that happens. So we have this, this is the aorta, okay, aorta, and then off of the aorta comes the renal artery, and then this is the kidney here, okay. This is our kidney, this is a renal artery. So if you have stenosis or narrowing of that artery, let's see, so you have a lot of flow here, but then it narrows out because remember, remember how radius of the blood vessel is a huge, huge um, controlling factor of how much flow is going. And remember what we talked about how in um, in in the renal auto regulation of blood flow. Remember what cells were involved in that. Remember there are JG cells in the in the kidney, juxtaglomerular cells, and these can sense lower flow. And they're going to sense this lower flow due to the stenosis, and they're going to say, "Okay, we need more blood. Okay, give us more blood." So they're going to use mechanisms, namely the renin-aldosterone-angiotensin axis, um, and they're going to use this axis, which we'll talk about more later, in order to increase blood pressure. Because if you increase blood pressure, increase blood volume, increase blood pressure to get more blood to the kidney, but it's going to be blood pressure everywhere in the system. So there's going to be more blood pressure here, the artery, there's going to be more blood pressure all over the arteries. And this is trying to get more blood into that renal artery. Now, there's a couple causes of stenosis. In young women, the most common cause is something called fibromuscular dysplasia. And this is a developmental defect resulting in the thickening of the arteries. So the arteries all thicken. So that's fibromuscular dysplasia. This is very commonly tested. You'll see a young woman, they have high, high blood pressure. Then oftentimes your answer is going to be fibromuscular dysplasia. In older patients, the, um, the more likely cause is due to atherosclerosis, which we will talk about in a second, in another lecture soon. But what it is, is you have plaque. So this is the renal artery. And there, you get plaques of, of, of lipids, and, of, and, and then this blocks up a lot of the lumen. So again, there's stenosis of that renal artery. Um, and this thing I already explained, so we don't have to go over it again. Um, so complications of hypertension. Remember I said that you can have a lot of bad things coming about from hypertension. So what are these? Well, you're at risk for coronary artery disease, heart failure, aortic dissection, aortic aneurysm, stroke. So that's a lot of bad things that I just listed out, and there's a lot more other things you're at risk for. You don't have to memorize this now, but we're going to talk about this, all of these different um, pathologies later, so it's a, it's a little taster. 
The other thing we want to know of is when you have very, very high blood pressure, that can be very bad by, uh, in of itself. Um, just imagine all that high blood, high blood pressure going into each of your organs and high, pre high pressure, your organs don't really like it. So there's two types. There's a hypertensive urgency, so urgent, but it's not emergency. Emergency is worse. Um, urgent, but not emergent. Um, this is defined as having high blood pressure over 180 or over 120, but you do not have acute end organ damage, but it's urgent because you still need to fix it before you get to end organ damage. Now, an emergency is when you have all this high blood pressure and you are having end organ damage, so all that pressure is messing up all your organs, and it can be any end organ. So in, any end organ is it's any end organ that's getting blood flow. So it can be the brain, you can have neurological problems, it can be the eyes, you can have... Um, vision, visionary pr vision problems. You can get blindness. The heart can have problems. You can have too much, um, too much pressure in the heart and the coronary vessels. You can get a heart attack. So MI you can get heart failure because the heart is pumping out. It gets, can't pump out again. It's that high pressure. Kidneys get are an end organ. You can get kidney damage due to all that pressure. So again, this is a very common, very common disease. Very important to treat. Very easy. Something, something that we can do a lot of. We do a lot of things to treat because we have a lot of risk factors that we can treat. And when we do that, we can prevent a lot of these really nasty complications. So that's it for hypertension.